You're listening to the Telltale Channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media, Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com. Hey, this is Owen. If you're comfortable, leave your first name and state at the sound of the tiny truck backing up. Uh, this is Jordan from Washington State, not D.C. I was wondering if you could look into the trans right activists um, for the using the bite model, because I've, I've seen that they have they how to explain they do a lot of thought control, information control. They call um, women who disagree with them. You can't disagree with them. If you are, you, they call you um, the B word, the C word, and terse and just and all that. And they don't leave any any um. They can't let you uh, discuss it or anything. You have to agree, or else you're a bigot. And I just I don't know. And no one. It's just it's they they seem like a cult or heading that way, and it's scary. And. I don't know. I was hoping, like, as a man of science, you could look into it and see if they are using some cult methods. So, um, if you don't want to, that's okay. But I was hoping if you could. Thank you. Bye. The question is, the question posed by the title of the video and by the voicemail is, are trans people in a cult? And I was just going to overlook this question largely because at its face, it seems kind of absurd, right? Are trans people in a cult? I actually talked about this roughly in a video a while back. I think the video's title on my main channel is something like, Is the Fat Acceptance Movement a Cult? or something like that. And I talked about the cult-like mindset and the cult-like aspects behind veganism, anti-SJWs, SJWs, and the fat acceptance movement. There is something to it, but I want to be very clear about what I'm saying. Um, I don't believe that trans people are in, are in a cult. That is, that is absurd at its face. Black Lives Matter's supporters are not in a cult. That's absurd at its face. No. But follow me through as we look a little bit deeper into it and just think about what I have to say on the subject. Let's take a quick glance at Stephen Hassan's Twitter and see what he had to say about it. Okay, so this is Stephen Hassan's Twitter account. He tweeted this out recently. He said, this is pretty long. I retweeted a J.K. Rowling tweet and weighed in as a mental health professional who has written four books on cult mind control and how to help those who have been harmed and their families. I spent over four decades in the field of research and helping those who have been harmed by undue influence. My website is freedomofmind.com and I've blogged for human rights against conversion therapy and for gay and trans rights. Okay, so it's all, it's all out on the table now. We know your credentials and your qualifications to speak on the subject and how you feel about gay and trans rights in general. Let's get to the point. A couple of years ago, I was approached by Lisa Marich Marichano. I don't know that person. A therapist who wanted to know my opinion on the phenomenon of young people being drawn into a cult-like situation where all of a sudden they thought they were the opposite sex. I was very skeptical as I also have close friends who are gay and a few friends who are trans, but my philosophy is to be open-minded and started reading, watching documentaries, and asked to interview detransitioners to better understand their experience. I became convinced that in these people's cases, they were indeed socially influenced, much of it online, to believe they must transition. Okay, let's, let's pause here for a second. Earlier I mentioned that I did a video on the veganism movement and things like that. How can a movement be a cult? I've been studying the bite model, the ICSA model, and lots of cult influence tactics, compliance tactics, for years and years. And I can tell you this, one thing that you find within cults is, a, is unification. It's unification of thought, complete unification. People say generalized statements, 
don't apply to people. You shouldn't use general statements, right? Not all blank believe this thing. Not all blank feel that way. Cults are the one exception to that generalization rule. All Jehovah's Witnesses are against blood transfusions. All of them. If you don't follow this dogma, this part of the Jehovah's Witness belief system, then you're not a Jehovah's Witness. They will kick you out if you get a blood transfusion permanently. You'll lose everything. All Scientologists believe psychology is bad, for example. Generalized statements apply to cults because there's such strong unity of thought. And the reason there's strong unity of thought is because there's behavior modification. They're forming out a personality. They're forming out a unique personality that best suits the group. There, you don't find that unification of thought among black protesters who are, who are protesting the George Floyd uh, murder at this moment. You don't find that among them. I, they all have different belief systems. Like Kanye West was out there protesting with them. Kanye West is a Trump supporter. You find broad diversity of thought among lots of social movements. Look at, for example, Buck Angel. That's diversity of thought. Buck Angel is a, a trans person who transitioned, I think, in the 80s or the 90s and has very different views about trans issues than a lot of younger trans people. There's wide diversity of thought. So it's absurd to say that being trans is a cult. That's absurd at its face, period, full stop. It's not a cult to be trans. But what Hassan is saying here in his tweet thread, let's go back to Hassan's tweet and just read this last little section here. There was a therapist who wanted to know my opinion on the phenomenon of young people being drawn into a cult-like situation where all of a sudden they thought that they were the opposite sex. Started reading, watching documentaries, and asked to interview detransitioners to better understand their experience. I became convinced that in, peop in these people's cases, they were indeed socially influenced, much of it online. This is where the cult aspect comes in. I talked about this in a video, and I also talked about it on my website. I call it the extremism gradient. So you'll find these little pockets of social media spaces like social media groups, Facebook groups, Telegram groups, uh, Twitter DMs, things like that, where people will post more and more radical ideas and their peers will come into the group and upvote, upvote, upvote. You see it on Reddit too. They'll get really excited. The more extreme the idea is, people are like, yeah, you're all in, you're with us. This recognition of this phenomenon led me to split cults into different tiers, different levels. This is part of my PowerPoint presentation on this subject, which I wrote this forever ago, and it's I'm, I'm writing a book about it at this immediate moment, but this phenomenon that we're talking about right now is what I call a level one cult or a tier one cult. It's decentralized and non-focused. Like Jehovah's Witnesses would be a level three cult because it's centralized and it's hierarchical. It's very focused. There are, there's strong unity of thought. There's strong leadership. They have dogma and everything else. Level two cults are basically groups that are decentralized but very focused on one specific figure. So there, there isn't necessarily a hierarchy to speak of. There aren't generals or deacons like you see with centralized hierarchical cults like Scientology or Jehovah's Witnesses, there's one single figure that's making the dogma as they go. An example would be Donald Trump. Cults of personality, generally speaking, are, would be considered t level two cults. And level one cults are what we're talking about right here. Decentralized, non-focused. There's no specific dogma that you have to follow and there's almost no unity of thought it's just all across the board nobody really has any specific outlined written down rules of what to believe but the more extreme your beliefs are the higher your status is in the group 
which kind of forms out like an organic hierarchy. Level one cults don't start out being hierarchical, but as time goes on in the social media group, they become hierarchical. And the more likes you get on a post because of the more extreme things that you post there, the higher your status is. That's kind of how it works. So are trans people a cult? The answer is no. That is completely absurd at its face. No. Are there cults within every movement, within the veganism movement, within the anti-vax movement, within Flat Earth, every, every single movement? Yes, they, they all have their, their little social media pockets of cults level one cults that get progressively more extreme. With all that being said, let's continue reading what Hassan said. I don't want to demonize the guy. I don't want to take an uncharitable interpretation of what he's saying because he's plenty smart, obviously. I mean, he wrote the bite model. He's been in this for decades. But he's generalizing a little bit here is how I feel. And he's generalizing against a marginalized group, and I just think that's bullshit. So, anyway, let's continue reading his tweet thread and see what it says, because it, it gets a little bit more interesting. They told me they were sleep-deprived, which, by the way, is a point on the bite model. Some described the praise and support they got for saying that they were trans made them feel loved, but the most surprising and upsetting thing was that some told me they watched hypnoporn. Like I said, this is tiny little pockets of the internet, tiny little social media pockets that have organic hierarchy formation. Like this is all my own research that I'm giving you guys right now. This isn't necessary. This isn't from Hassan or anybody. This is just what I've experienced and what I've seen and what I'm writing about right now. Let's just read a little bit more because he, he has more to say about it. The most surprising and upsetting thing was that some told me they watched hypnoporn. I had no idea what they were talking about and asked for some URLs. After my deprogramming from the moon cult in 1976, I became interested in mind control and in 1980 went to my first workshop, an NLP workshop by Richard Bandler, and discovered the power of Ericksonian hypnotic techniques. These are what Tony Robbins learned and marketed without saying it was neuro-linguistic programming. I'm going to talk about NLP a little bit later, too. I did multiple trainings in NLP, and I even moved to Santa Cruz to apprentice John Grinder, the other co-founder of it. It was powerful and provided a methodology to understand cult mind control. I came to understand NLP was amoral, meaning the system of influence was entirely dependent on the ethics of the practitioner. I distanced myself from it as they marketed it to salespeople and corporate types. I wanted to know about Milton Erickson, the psychiatrist who NLP was based on, but needed a master's degree to receive ethical training in hypnosis from health professionals. I've been attending workshops and giving them ever since. What I watched in hypnoporn, in my opinion, was weapons grade mind control, and if a person watches it, especially if they were at a low point in their life, confused, stoned, are friends with a bunch of trans folks, they could be profoundly influenced to, for example, believe they were a woman in a man's body. Let me be clear. I am for human rights, for gay and trans rights. I'm against conversion therapy, quote unquote. But what I've come to learn is that young people are not getting good ethical counseling regarding their traumas, their body image issues, their gayness, especially if they're raised in homophobic environments. They're being rushed into taking hormones, and in some cases, surgery, and then, sometimes years later, realize they've made a big mistake to transition. For those people, detransitioners have told me they've been harassed, treated as a traitor, exactly what cults do to defectors. This is not right, so I wish to add my voice to the mental health experts speaking up to say that we need to stop polarization and conflict and have a more educated, nuanced point of view when it comes to human beings. Things are not binary, all or nothing, transition or die was the ideology. Versus maybe transition, let me research, let me go for expert counseling, let me not be isolated from my family and friends by an all or nothing position, and let me do what is right for me. Taking powerful hormones is not benign, they are, there are side effects. Get second and third opinions, take your time, please visit my website and blah blah blah. So about this hypnoporn thing... I actually looked it up, um, I, like looked up the category and watched it because the impression that I'm getting from uh, from Hassan's 
tweets here is that he's saying that he watched this and was borderline becoming hypnotized by it. I have historically been extremely skeptical about hypnotism. I think hypnotism is pseudoscience. There's probably something to it. And honestly, I, I have not researched it enough to say with any complete certainty that it's pseudoscience, but that's the impression I get of hypnotism right now. So that's kind of where I sit with it at this moment. In the movie and the book, I believe, Clock, A Clockwork Orange, they depict this person basically sitting in this chair, strapped to the chair, with his eyes like held open by these little plastic things and they're playing a video that's like a brainwashing video to try to brainwash him into believing something right that's not really how it works that's not how it works at all there is zero truth or accuracy to that it's completely fabricated it's it's just like an imaginary world where that's how brainwashing works is not how it works but that's the impression that I'm getting from Stephen Hassan. I'm getting the impression that that's what he was saying this is. It's that kind of thing where, you, you know, you sit down and you watch this thing and all of a sudden you're trans. To me, it comes across as somebody who's afraid that people who play video games or violent video games are going to exhibit violent tendencies. Um... That's just been debunked. Like, that's just nonsense. Like, the whole thing is nonsense to me. This whole hypno-porn thing, it's nonsense. I don't buy it. I'm open to being convinced by Hassan if he wants to email me. We have emailed back and forth before. We've corresponded. He's been on my channel. Open to changing my mind about any of these subjects. As it stands, this just sounds like nonsense to me, truthfully. I felt like I needed to address this subject because I talk about Stephen Hassan's work a lot on my channel, the Byte model, and the influence continuum and everything. I can't ignore this. I appreciate what he's doing, trying to call attention to something that he sees as an issue, but my big issues with this right now are, first of all, he shouted out J.K. Rowling, which is a She's objectively monstrous. She is just a very harmful, objectively harmful anti-science person. So I, I do not respect the fact that he retweeted her or is throwing his support behind her. That's really n messed up, honestly, to me. This bit about hypnoporn is really, really confusing to me. Like I said, I, I did watch some of this stuff that my viewers or my followers on Twitter told me which category they thought that it was. So I watched some of it and it was basically just regular stuff with like a lo-fi beat behind it. That was about it. I'm having trouble buying into the premise of hypnosis anyways, but claiming that hypnosis is being used to basically brainwash people through this a clockwork orange style video is completely absurd. I have studied compliance techniques of the Chinese during uh, 1980s on prisoners of war. I've studied compliance techniques like NLP, like street epistemology. I've studied all kinds of different types of brainwashing and mind control. Nothing here is making any sense to me. This hypnoporn thing is not adding up. I do not buy it. I'm sorry. So that's the second thing I have a problem with. Now, the third thing that I have a problem with regarding Stephen Hassan's tweet thread is the fact that he's heavily generalizing throwing his weight behind somebody who is anti-trans and anti-science and basically saying that being trans is... There's a very high probability that you are trans because you were 
unduly influenced or because of mind control. I understand that that may be the case with some people, like some members of these level one decentralized non-focused cults. That may be the case for some of them. We need to get really, really specific with what we're talking about here and not generalize because this is a marginalized group and it's particularly important that we get this right because if we get this wrong, it could lead to a lot of harm for marginalized communities. I feel like Hassan was not specific enough. He's throwing his weight behind somebody who is anti-science and harmful to people. And he's throwing out nonsensical words like hypnoporn. That's my main issue with Stephen Hassan. Now, there's one more thing that I wanted to touch on. Uh, this is a really long segment. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, but I really feel like I need to touch on this. Hassan says that he studied NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. What is Neuro Linguistic Programming? Neuro Linguistic Programming is basically a form of compliance. Uh, it, it's a form of manipulating people, pretty much. So let me ask you guys this. What's the first word that comes to mind when you hear the term car salesman? The first word I think of is scumbag. In a lot of cases, car salesmen, for example, will read books about neuro-linguistic programming. The goal behind neuro-linguistic programming is manipulating people to get something that you want. I read a book about it recently to get an idea of, you know, the mindset and, and, and the compliance techniques that people use to try to manipulate people. The entire book was just this person basically explaining the tactics, which is pretty straightforward. It's just basically pushing logical fallacies on people like the bandwagon effect, uh, the sunk costs fallacy. Don't quit now. You've already got so much invested. There's also, there are things like mirroring. If they cross their legs, then you should cross your legs. Uh, you don't want to do it too obviously or people catch on to it. Using their name a lot, looking in their eyes, directly in their eyes while you talk to them, things like that. It's little tricks to kind of try to manipulate people's uh, psyche to make them trust you more and then pushing things on them. Talking about things that they like. Like if you're trying to sell them a car and you get in their car, you get in their trunk, you say, hey, I see you had some camping equipment in your trunk. I love getting out of the city. Try to relate something back and make yourself m seem more like them. That's kind of the technique. And the rest of the book, outside of describing the techniques, the rest of the book was like, disturbing narcissistic bullshit it's talking about how great you are and how amazing you are and you you got good grades and you're such a strong person and it's saying it the book is saying it to you as though it's speaking to you because it it wants to pump you up it, it wants you to feel powerful that's the idea behind nlp the best liar believes their own lies if you believe that you're confident you will be confident it's you have to modify your personality just like cults do for nlp to work for you to be able to successfully use neuro-linguistic programming you have to modify your personality to be that of a person who is willing to manipulate people who has a lot of confidence in who they are and knows what they want and is ready to get it at any cost that's the premise behind nlp I wouldn't say it's amoral. Stephen Hassan says it's amoral. I would go as far as to say it is immoral. It is contrary to morality to use NLP, I believe, because you're basically trying to manipulate people to get something that, that they have. In the case of a car salesman, you're manipulating them into giving you their money or giving you their sale. Anyways, those I, I want to do a longer video on like NLP and compliance techniques and things like that. Um, it, it, it's going to take time to do a long form video on it because I've got to think through what I, I want to say about it. But 
Uh, that's the premise of it. So anyways, I'm not really happy with Stephen Hassan right now, but I just wanted to put my thoughts on record about it because people have been asking me what I thought about it for days, and I did tweet out a, a, a bit about how I felt, and I thought about talking to Hassan about it, but I don't know. I haven't talked to him about it yet. We'll see if that happens in the future. I don't know. Time will tell.